Okay, so let us now start with the, the course topic, which is federated learning. So what is federated learning? And uh, one explanation could be federated learning trains machine learning models in a distributed fashion over a network of devices. So here I have shown one, one example application of federated learning, which could be the high precision management of pandemics. So maybe you remember a while ago, we all suffered from this COVID restrictions. And one challenge was to find out the best way to isolate people or to reduce the mobility of people. And one way could be to use a smartphone app, which runs a federated learning algorithm and gives you the optimal prediction for, is it safe to go out? Yes or no? Is it safe to go out of the house? If, if you get uh, a green uh, prediction, then you, it's safe to leave the house. If red, then it's not safe today. Almost like a weather forecast. So this is an example of a federated learning system where each uh, device, each smartphone here trains its own model. It trains a personal model for you. Each one of these, so if you have a smartphone with this app, you get optimal predictions for you. And to learn how to do these predictions, these federated learning uh, components cooperate with each other. So there's a, a cooperation, uh, cooperative aspect, cooperative aspect, uh, collaborative aspect in federated learning. You, you use a bit of information from the other uh, users or the other potential patients to get a better model for yourself. You might also include uh, a very uh, large databases that are freely available, for example, from public institutions. So federated learning it can often involve very different types of devices, so heterogeneous networks. And we will see how we can model these heterogeneous networks using uh, mathematical optimization models. Okay, the, some of the key characteristics of federated learning is that we do not necessarily need a centralized data collection, which makes it robust. If you have a centralized server which holds all the data, then you have a single point of failure. So if, if this single data storage goes south, gets destroyed, it's gone. Everything is gone. But in federated learning, the information and the knowledge is distributed over many, many nodes, millions, billions of nodes. So a second characteristic is that each device trains a, a personalized model. So this, this is a natural way to obtain personalization. You train a, a model for each individual user or device. And these models can then be way more precise or way more accurate than an average model. Like if you, if you want a, a prediction for how long does a certain bicycle ride take you, then you want to make a prediction, then you want to get a prediction that is tailored to you, given your fitness level and your bike, and you don't want an average prediction, as an example. Uh, another key characteristic is uh, this uh, collaborative uh, approach or collaborative aspect. So in federated learning, we share information and computational power. So this goes hand in hand. We share data and compute among devices. Uh, some other devices compute a bit and the results of this computation can be sent back in some form to me and help me to get a better model. And also this, the results of this computation carry information. So not only we, we, we spread the computational burden, but we also uh, share or collect information from other nodes. And this allows scalability. So we can then solve way larger machine learning problems than each one of us alone with, with a single smartphone. Yeah, and the last key characteristic is that no, typically no road data is shared. We, we do not exchange uh, images in a federated learning uh, system typically, but only some summary statistic or some, some result of, of computations that are done by a machine learning algorithm. And these this, this results that we then share, they carry way, way less information about private attributes or sensitive data than the raw data. So this makes federated learning uh, inherently privacy friendly. Yeah, I have here depicted a few possible federated learning applications that m you might consider in, in your project. So um, maybe I pick out a few here, the, maybe the most important one and also where this term federated learning or the field really took off is, is in healthcare. Because in healthcare, 
we have uh, very strict privacy regulations. I don't want my personal healthcare records to be shared with all of you. Still, I would be willing to, to share the information that is contained in my healthcare records to train a better model for cancer prediction or something. So this is uh, actually, this is the, the, the requirements for federated learning are exactly the requirements in, in like what we have in healthcare. We have a lot of data around, raw data, like our healthcare records, which are very sensitive. So we cannot easily share it. They are very much protected. But the, this collection of data, each one uh, physician has an own database of, of his patients, his or her patients, carries a lot of information that can be used for each one of us to get a better predictive model or better uh, therapy predictions for each one of us. So healthcare is maybe the most important application domain still for federated learning. There's also federated learning techniques coming up in finance to improve fraud detection or risk assessment. I found here some recent uh, references that you can also find most likely in the paper list for a candidate paper for doing a paper review. You can also choose these topics in your projects. Uh, another recent application domain that's maybe gaining more and more traction is in smart grids. So uh, the, the power supply is more and more in the form of, of heterogeneous networks. So you have uh, renewable energy. Every one of, some of us might have their own wind turbine or solar panel yet. So you want to know, for example, in, in, in my case, uh, we have a solar panel and uh, it would be interesting to know when is the best time to start a washing machine. Because when I start the washing machine, I should be pretty sure that within the next one or two hours, there will still be sunshine. Because if there's all of a sudden clouds, uh, the solar panel doesn't uh, deliver enough power anymore. And I have to take more costly or more expensive energy from the power grid, from the conventional power grid to, to uh, serve my uh, washing machine. So for this, I would like to have a federated learning app that delivers for me the perfect prediction for my area, for my house, how likely is there sunshine in the next two hours. So I really with high precision uh, predictions. And this is something that federated learning uh, might be able to do.